What's going on YouTube? It's Mr. Ferguson Vlog here once again. Thank you guys so much for going for coming back for another video here at my home in Central North Carolina. I've still got the post trip um, little nasal thing going on. It seemed like several of us from America that was over there in Ecuador, uh, we got this little nasal thing going on with the weather changing from going to AC to coming out of the AC and the humid climate. We get this little, you know, nasal thing. And so yesterday I felt like it was gone and then it flared up again. So uh, I apologize and I do have some water here uh, in case my throat gets a little weird. But thank you for tuning in today. We'll just jump right into it uh, as far as the details. But, uh, we, you know, uh, I haven't been to Ecuador. Uh, the last time, I, let me put it this way. The last time I went to Ecuador was about 12 years ago the way I can figure it out I had some pictures on Facebook but I got all Facebook I deleted that account and uh, so I'm unable to look up those pictures and know exactly when I went to Ecuador the first time but it was somewhere around 2011 so it's been about 12 years since I went um, to Ecuador and the last time I actually flew on a plane was probably when I came back from Egypt and that was in 2013 so it wasn't uh, too long after Ecuador I went to Egypt to serve um, uh, with the North Carolina National Guard for the uh, Multinational Forces and Observers Treaty there in the Sinai of Egypt. Um, so it'd been a long time. And when I did go, uh, my heart wasn't right then. I was dealing with things that I've shared on this channel. I was dealing with pornography addiction that I hid from everybody and dealing with uh, sexual sins, dealing with um, drinking um, periodically, pretty periodically, uh, especially after that deployment. And of course, in between, you know, I wasn't just running from God all the time. There was times where I'd come back to God, forgive me and help me. But uh, my heart, you know, I still had those addictions there. It was completely different going this time. It really was. And uh, also my wife went with me in that 2011 trip. It was a lot of people from our church. This trip, it was my dad, myself, and then it was like 55 other people from other churches. Uh, so it was a completely different type of trip. And so uh, I'll, I'll show some clips here of Guayaquil. This is what the city kind of looks like. There's the, the big parakeet that was in the middle of the, uh, of the city when we would ride from hotel to uh, the location where we went called Salsas 2. Um, here's some of the hilly um, area of Guayaquil and stuff, if I've saved some of that. Some of the pictures I may have, some I may not. I may have already taken off, but uh, just that's what some of the area is. It's, it's hot. It's their winter uh, right now, and in their winter, it's around 85, 90 degrees, uh, very humid. Uh, it gets hotter. It's very hot. They've only got a summer and a winter, according to Google. So uh, that's what some, you know, we'd ride the bus, we'd jump on the bus. But before we would go on the bus and go into Guayaquil, that's some of the pictures of what the city looks like. We'd go up on the roof, and I think I've only got like one clip of that. We would go into the racket room in the morning. We'd go eat lunch, or excuse me, go eat breakfast in the morning. Then we'd come up top to the roof. We'd go into the racquetball room, and we just praise the Lord. Just welcome him into our heart. Say, God, guide us today be with us today. We don't know what type of area we're going into, but you're going to be our strength. You're going to be our provider. Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to spread your gospel. And we'd have a great time just singing and praising and uh, in the Lord. And we would come back later at night. And I don't think I recorded any of those because everybody's so tired by that point. Uh, we would come back at 745 at night after dinner and uh, share testimonies of what happened that day. And uh, it was super exciting. I love that because, you know, I, I, I love to hear what God is doing in other people, other teams, and uh, of even our own teams. We'd hear some of them when we'd come back at lunchtime. So uh, that was always cool. And so, uh, and then, you know, so, so here's some of the hotel maybe. Um, if I didn't show you some of that, some of what the hotel looks like, the big iguana there, the pool. It's a beautiful hotel. As I shared on the, the lawn channel, we stay at this specific place because they speak a lot of English. They've uh, worked with us for over 15 years with our organization. We know these people well. We trust them. There's a connection there. Uh, their hotels have AC. Um, they, they provide water for us, bottled water. It's just, uh, and so it's not that we go to this luxurious, luxurious vacation resort uh, we're, we're in the hotel very little time to be honest with you we're going from event to event to event to to eat to back to the room to up on the roof to praise the Lord to bed then waking up and doing the same thing out on the streets it's a non-stop type trip and it goes by pretty quick um, 
And so, uh, but the hotel is gorgeous, beautiful. Um, it would be a different encounter to go and actually just enjoy the hotel and swim in the pool. Uh, but one of the, the, the place that we ended up, so how, so where did you go, Mr. Ferguson, specifically? The city is called Guayaquil, Ecuador. But when we get there, there's a uh, there's a, a, a pastor uh, called uh, Samuel. I'm not sure of his last name, but he is our connection to the organization I'm in, Church of God, in the United States. And they discuss, hey, this is when we're coming. This is what how many people are coming. And so Samuel and our leadership get together, discuss it, and Samuel establishes which pastor or new pastor coming up needs a church is is qualified to go and lead that church so when we get there uh, they say you're going to this area and uh, we had such a big team this year they said we're going to have two teams one area to go over here and one group to come over here uh, excuse me one group to go to two different areas and so we had two different pastors and we did two church plants the pastor that we did uh, here's a picture of my dad and i believe brother mike and and here's pastor digna uh, so this lady and her husband they're both going to be pastor in this church and uh, and so they're wanting to help their community and one of the things we heard in the community that we were in so often is that the crime continues to go up 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 uh, it continues to be uh, motorcycle gangs all over the place there's little alleyways and I don't know if I have a picture of this but between everyone's home it's a it's an alleyway I don't know probably about seven feet wide and it's like an alley i mean it's like if you're when you're in there it's kind of a dangerous place right because if you're in an alley anybody can do anything and they were saying motorcycles will ride through these areas and snatch people's stuff and ride off and so uh it's, it can be dangerous but uh but we went door to door and uh and and for sake of prolonging it, we went door to door in the morning, we'd eat lunch, then we'd go out in the evenings uh, and, and knock on doors, come back, and then we would have a time of discipleship in the afternoon where the, we would ask the people to come back, say, hey, at four o'clock, come back, come back to the big tent over here by the park where we are, and we want to give you some things. We gave them a Bible, we gave them some pamphlets uh, and a book, a devotional book, and we went through three lessons, and we said, go day one, day two, day three, we're trying to get them back for three days and share with them this uh, devotional book. And it talks about the heart and talks about now that you have accepted Jesus in your heart, that's just the beginning, right? It's not like, hey, good luck to you. We're headed back to America. Here's your pre. It's all about connecting these individuals in this community to this uh, pastor and, and to this new church because that's what they need and that's what the community needs. And so many people that we knocked on their door and they said, yeah, I've already accepted Jesus in my heart, but man, we are so glad you guys are here to start a church. They were so excited about that. Um, and so uh, just uh, briefly, because uh, I've got a, actually a doctor's appointment that I've got to get to for my physical annual wellness thing that I've got to get to. So I'm limiting my time. But uh, just one of the stories, you know, here's a lady that I shared. Um, I only got a picture with her. I didn't get any video, but her name is Julie. She's got six kids. This woman walked from Venezuela to Ecuador on foot with six kids she described to us that she's trying to get to the mexico to the border to try to sneak into the u.s and of course we shared with her how dangerous that is how the cartels would gladly take her kids and uh and do terrible things to them if not kill them and and they're on both sides of the sides of the border both on texas and mexico and uh that they're, they're wicked people and you don't want to do that um and we was able to share jesus with her and i showed her the cube the salvation cube and was able to show that to her and go through that and explain for two minutes uh, about how Jesus loves her and she looked and looked and she was just like wow 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 but she said no she didn't want to pray the prayer of salvation and uh, and we were kind of I thought for sure she would but she said no she said I've seen so many bad things in Venezuela I'm still I'm not ready to make that step because I feel like how can a loving God uh, allow such um, you know terrible things to happen that was her viewpoint and the local lady that was with us as a guy that spoke Spanish fluently she began to discuss and talk with her and she would just begin to cry and she was sharing how God takes the rap for a lot of the things that the enemy does don't he and uh, that God loves her so much and that um, uh, sin is still in this world and and God God isn't the one that God gives us free will just like we went with free will. We, we didn't force Jesus on people, right? So we didn't come say, now you better do this or you're going to burn. 
You're going to burn all day. You're going to burn all night. You better do it. See, no, that's not the way we presented the gospel. We presented as the decision is yours. Like, here's the information. This is what God's word says. This is what the Bible says. It's up to you. If you want to make this decision right here, right now, we'll pray the prayer. Jesus will come into your heart right now and forgive you of all your sin. But that decision is up to you. And we had a few people, including Julie, that said no. But I'm continuing to pray for her that uh, God would change her heart because the Holy Spirit was all over that girl. She was shaking. Shaken. She was scared. She uh, not scared. She was shaken. She was she was um, she was in an uncomfortable position. And the reason why is because she has sin in her heart that God wants to take away from her. And and she was feeling that Holy Spirit conviction. But uh, but she got out of you know she said no 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 I'm good. Looked like she might she might have been uh, um, maybe addicted to drugs. I don't know. Uh, but we gave her all the food we had, all the water we had, and I continue to pray for Julie. There was another lady in the park that I'll put her picture up here. She blessed my heart so much, and I didn't even get to talk to this lady. But this woman um, that you see right here with her hands lifted up in the park, the youth would go into a public park and just begin to do dramas and sing songs and praise the Lord. And um, this lady, she started from day one till the last day that we left. She was there. Um, and she had two boys and she showed up. She was also from Venezuela. She's dirt poor. She sleeps under a bridge at nighttime in Ecuador. She has no home. She don't have anything. She don't have any food. So yeah, so do I go, well, and some people may say, well, that's why she was hanging out. You guys give her food or what? No, we, we didn't have handout services, um, but, but she came and she heard what the youth was ministering and she prayed the prayer of salvation, and asked Jesus in her heart. And in that picture that I just showed you, that's one of my favorite pictures of the whole trip because here's all these, we was in a middle-class neighborhood in Ecuador. People had money in this in this area. I mean, these people were garage door openers. You don't see that a lot. Uh, it was nice homes, uh, but here's this dirt poor lady from Venezuela and she's the only one sitting in that crowd with her hands lifted and her head bowed, honoring God, thanking Jesus, just worshiping him. And I, that just blessed my heart so much to see this woman just with a heart of praise and a sacrifice of praise. Uh, she just blessed my heart. And so we continue to pray for her. We, we met with uh, my dad. I went out with my dad several times. And the, even the last day um, that I was there, Thursday, we met a doctor, uh, very, very rich, very smart very brilliant. His, his wife's a psychologist. He wants to get connected with the United States. He was just blown away at how he has been thinking, how am I going to get connected to somebody in the medical field in the United States? Well, he wants to be the same type of doctor that my mom used to work for. So when my dad begins to talk to this guy, he speaks perfect English, which was also amazing. But he said, my wife used to uh, gastology, I think, gut doctor, basically. Um, that's what he wants to study. And he said, my wife worked for Dr. Alsaba, a gut doctor he's like you got to be kidding me he's like yeah we begin to tell him about sam well how he helps us orchestrate where we're going to go in the community of guac hill and how he's part of the church of god and this guy was like man i'd love to get connected with y'all's organization as a doctor to be able to help my community help kids help people that need medical treatment and so it was a divine appointment that god sent us to this guy's house at this time uh, and so we're praying that he'll get connected with sam well and now we have another doctor to be able to help provide services for that community and it's just god just lined these things up and to close um, there's so many things I could share, you know, uh, over and over. There's even a devotion that we did on the rooftop at 745 from one of the Cary Church of God uh, youth that was awesome. But I'll tell you one more story. And this was the day that me, my buddy Jairo, he speaks Spanish and English. He's from here in the United States. We went out as a team with a very knowledgeable lady named, uh, I always screw her name up. I want to call her Lydia but it's like Linda or Lindia or something like that. She is a mature woman of God. She was amazing, spoke fluent, no, no English, fluent uh, uh, Spanish, but man, this woman knew the word. She knew how to uh, relate to the people of the community. She was just amazing. So we, uh, and we actually connected with an older guy from Farmington Heights, um, church his name is bob got to know him a lot during the week older guy um probably about i don't know mr bob's probably in his 60s very nice guy and uh he said well we've been down the street already the street we was at after lunch and he said but let's go down the street anyway so we go down the road uh we knock on one of these doors and the door opens uh to our surprise and it's a guy with no shirt on younger guy 30s he kind of looks with squinted eyes and he's like yeah 
and they were like, hey man, you know, well, excuse me, uh, the uh, the interpreter says, do you have a minute? We like, we're from America, we like to share some things with you. And he's like, yeah, one minute. So he closes the door, puts his shirt on. I was like, okay, this guy must work. I immediately thought he works night shift or something like that because he was sleeping. So he comes out, he's got a shirt on now, and they're like, yeah, and they're, you know, we're giving the same, you know, uh, um, uh, message we give to everybody. Hey, this is Steven. I'm Hiro. This is Mr. Bob and this is Lydia, you know, but we are us three, me, Bob and Hiro, we're from America and we're in your area going door to door. Uh, we planted churches in your community and, and medical facilities done all this, but we're going around right now asking if people want prayer. And we was wondering if there's anything specifically we can pray with you about right now that you need from God. And when Hiro asked him that question, this young guy, he just put his head down and just put his hand in his head and he just began to cry, just begin to weep. And uh, I've told it so much now that I'm not gonna cry finally, but I used to cry every time I begin to share this story. But he just began to cry and, and we're like, oh man. And, and he so he starts speaking Spanish and basically he said, my family's in Venezuela and I'm here. I've been here three months. I'm a uh, an immigrant and I'm here. I've been in this home for three months. I miss my daughters, my little kids, I think is what he said. My daughters, my children. I can't see my children, they're back in Venezuela. And uh, my, my wife, I think is what he said, but he's the only one here for whatever reason. And he just began to, he has a broken heart. And he's like, pray that I can be reunited. And it just broke all of our hearts. And we're just like, wow. And uh, so we just put our hands on our brother and we get to pray that one day, you know, God will, he, God already knows and he will reunite this man with his family. And we prayed for him. We pray God would touch his heart to, to cheer him up, that he, God can be that joy, right? Uh, in place of, you know, the sadness that he has. And, but I understand I was in Iraq for two years. I left my daughter and my daughters. Uh, and when I went to Egypt and I understand it's, it, you can just have them days where you just miss your family and it's just hard. So we prayed for him. And, uh, and and then he began to share after we pray, we said, hey, amen, he began to talk to us. And here's what he shared. And I'm just, you know, it was in Spanish being interpreted, but he said, he woke up this morning. He said, my belly was hurting really bad right here in my gut. And uh, we're like, oh, we need to pray for his belly. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, he's like, listen to my story. He said, my belly, my belly was hurting real bad this morning, but then I had to call in to work. And I said that, um, that my belly's hurting. And they said, okay, stay home. We don't want you if you're sick. So he said, my belly's hurting real bad. So I laid down. He said, uh, by the time lunch, lunchtime came, my belly was fine. The, the pain went away. So it doesn't hurt anymore. As I'm talking to you right now, my belly is fine. He said, but, but after it felt better, I was laying in my bed and I was just thinking about my family and I was praying to God and I would say, God, do you even see me? Do you even know me? Do you see the circumstance of Venezuela? Do you see where I'm at right now? Lord, uh, show me a light, show me a sign that you even love or care about me. That's what he was laying in his bed in the dark thinking about. He said, the very next thing I know you're knocking on my door and here we are talking. And he was just he just kept like drifting off thinking about that. He said, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he just had to smile on his face because it was amazing to this man that the God that he was praying to sent us out of all the houses in that area, street house after house after house, street after street, God sent us to this guy's house. And he was just amazed after literally moments before we knocked on his door, He's praying for God to show him that he sees where he's at and that he loves him. And here we are praying for him. And before we left, I just wrapped my hands around that guy. I said, I want to pray one more time for you. I said, I wish I could reunite you with your family, my friend. But the best thing I can do is pray. Since you already have Jesus in your heart, I just want to pray with you. I laid my hands on him. We prayed for this guy and uh, told him goodbye, but he was just blown away. And that's the power of divine appointments that God sent us on this week. That was just, you can't, you know, over time, telling the story story over time see it loses its it, it, it's it's awesomeness you know because it's old news right and it's time and I'm ready to go and, and, and ready to go back over there and, and and new stories to come and many had different stories of healing tumors that disappeared off old old ladies necks uh, we had a testimony of that it completely disappeared she's dancing in the street because her tumor completely went away God is faithful to those that will say yes Lord send me and so I just wanted to share more in detail the stories the lives that were impacted because I said yes this year and it's not to boast about me all glory to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as my brother Gary says all glory and honor and praise belongs to Jesus I'm just the conduit I'm just the pipe God flows through me out into these people and I'm just the one 
that's speaking with this tongue. And then God did the work. And I told him that we can't do anything for you, but we can bring Jesus to you. And Jesus sent us to where we needed to be for such the time that we needed to be during that week. And it was just absolutely amazing. I hope my brother would come again. I hope my wife will come. I'm hoping that others in our church will come because it truly will change your heart and your life. So, uh, so I just want to say a quick prayer for Ecuador as we end this video and, uh, and I get on the road to, uh, to get this medical appointment taken care of, but it was just a blessing and an honor. And I look forward to it next time. So can we just quickly pray for the, for the two new churches and for the Salsas too, and for uh, the city of Guayaquil, Ecuador. Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to share what you've done, God. It isn't what we did from America. We're not any better than anybody in Ecuador, God. We're just people. But Lord, you flowed through us. You used us in such a mighty way in Ecuador. And Lord, and it was awesome. Lord, and it changed my life. It changed my heart. It changed my thinking. And Lord, you changed the hearts and lives of over 500 people to accept Jesus in their heart in that in that nation just through our team, God. And there was other American teams I've learned that were there at the same time as us. And so, God, we thank you for what you're doing in Ecuador. And we pray for the success of these churches that have been planted last week, that God, the enemy wants nothing better than to destroy them, to tell them they're crazy, and to knock it off its blocks before it ever gets started. But God, uh, what you start Lord, you will complete and finish. And so we pray for the pastors. We pray for the families. We pray for the members. We pray for these new uh, uh, baby Christians, God, that you would walk, breathe, and talk with them, God, and minister to them in a mighty way. We pray for the ones that said no to salvation, that, God, you would deal with their hearts. Lord, you know where they are. You know what they're doing at this very moment. And we pray that you would, Lord, convict that heart of sin. And, God, they would accept you as Lord and Savior. We love you today. We thank you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for those that took the time to tune in to hear the details. And there's so much even more. But uh, but God, is done, he's, he's lit a fire in my heart again. I was kind of, we talked about in Sunday school, we just kind of get through these, this routine and motion here in America. When you go and it's all about others, it is awesome. So praise Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ for what he did in Ecuador. And to God be the glory. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next uh, Midweek Quickie here on the Mr. Ferguson's Vlog Channel. God bless you.